everybody, it's Emily. So just a quick update before I get into the main topic of this video, which actually happens to not be related to my weight loss journey specifically. Um, I did want to give an update about my weight loss journey because I'm pretty sure most of the people who are subscribed to me are subscribed to me because of that. And I haven't posted an update in a while. So I'm still being consistent with working out and eating healthy. I have actually lost about four pounds since the last time I updated, um, updated you on my weight. And I've actually been taking my measurements as well, at least around my waist and my hips. And I've lost four inches around my waist and two off my hips. So I'm making progress and I'm super proud of myself. But that is not today's topic. Today's topic is going to be about my experience with a condition known as maladaptive daydreaming. Now, maladaptive dream daydreaming is a term that was coined by a, an Israeli professor named Eli Summer. And it's basically when an individual daydreams excessively. And by excessively, I mean like 90% of the time, at least in my own experience. So just like before I get more in depth into this. When I say like individuals and things, I'll, I'm mostly talking about me and other like story, like the majority of the stories that I've read about individuals who also are dealing with this particular condition. So like, I'm not trying to generalize or anything. If you happen to be somebody who thinks is experiencing this, but you're, you're um, dealing with it in a different way than I am, but a lot of it's still kind of lined up and there are little nuances, then, I mean, your experience is still valid with that, and yeah, I'm just not trying to generalize anybody. You may have noticed I've been calling this a condition, and that is because this is not recognized as a disorder in a diagnostic manual yet, so you won't find it in the DSM or anything. There is actually kind of a debate on whether or not it's a disorder in and of itself or just like a symptom of other disorders. Because individuals um, with other disorders seem to have this as a symptom, the most common that, that I've seen being like ADHD and OCD specifically. But then I've heard of other individuals who have it that have like PTSD, CPTSD, anxiety disorders. Um, so it's really seen in that. And I believe for some people it's really just a form of escapism, but I mean, it's not that research, so I can't say that for sure. So with my daydreaming, I can trace this whole experience back to the time when I was like three years old. And I mean, that's fairly normal for kids to daydream and do the kind of things that you may find maladaptive daydreamers doing. Like um, having imaginary friends, pretending you're part of a TV series, like a character in the Power Rangers or Powerpuff Girls, which when I was a child, those are the ones that I pretended that I was a character in. And that's, that's fairly normal. But the thing with maladaptive daydreamers are that they kind of take this from childhood and have it span over like the majority of their lives. From what, again, from what I have known about it in my own experience. So like, for example, I was still like, my friends and I would do this in elementary school, but when it got to junior high, it was more like, this was kind of a thing I began to internalize. And I didn't really talk about it with many other people because some of the some of the traits of maladaptive daydreaming, like the symptoms of maladaptive daydreaming can be a little bit embarrassing. Example. Well, I'll just I'll just talk about it a little more in depth. So with me and from what I've known of other people who have this condition, it's almost like when it's really bad and in its more serious stages, um, it's almost like you're living in two alternate worlds, if that makes sense. But it's not a hallucination and it's not a delusion. So for example, I am Emily and I am aware that I am like alone here in my apartment. Um, but I'm also daydreaming at this exact same moment. I am a protagonist in a daydream and there are actually people around me watching me filming this video who I'm like super close to. That's just an example of it. Now I'm aware that I'm actually alone and that I'm just daydreaming, that other people are around me. It's not something, it's not like a hallucination. I don't actually see people around me. So, and I'm not thinking that there are actually people around here. 
or around me. So, um, yeah. So it's not a hallucination and it's not a delusion. But, like, growing up, for example, I would, like, be in my living room with my mom and just be us. But in my head, there was, like, people that I was close to still being around me. And for me personally, I think this actually developed in my head because I was super alone when I was a kid. Like, it was just me and my mom because my dad was um, working and he wasn't there. And I didn't have any siblings and I didn't really have a lot of friends, like, throughout most of my life. Even now, I don't have, like, a close group of friends. And I found that, like, within my daydreaming, I do have that close group of friends around me most of the time. So, kind of sounds really sad, but it's, it's, it's really not that bad. Um, but not only after daydreaming in itself can be bad because it can kind of take away from a person's productivity and functioning in life, which um, is what people who argue that this is a disorder point out. Like, I have, I feel like I've lost a whole bunch of my life and being able to experience maybe even making actual friendships with people just because I was so um, internal in my head. Like, for example, um, I probably could have been going out and making actual friends instead of just pretending that all of them were in my head or that I was friends with, like, a bunch of characters from a book series or a TV series or, you know, you get that. Or just, like, actual people who I went to school with, I would sometimes have daydreams that I was just friends with them, and they would come over to my house and stuff. So that is one way. It also really distracted me from schoolwork. Um, sometimes I'd be so enmeshed in my daydreams that I wouldn't sleep or anything because, yeah. And going back to where it was, like, an alternate world and I was a different character there, um, Sometimes these can be super in-depth. Like, sometimes I would have actual emotions because of these daydreams. Like, I would laugh if something funny was happening. I would cry. I would, like, actually have, like, love for these people. And um, it's just, it's really interesting how in-depth and enmeshed a person can come in their daydreams. Another reason <laughs> people argue that it could be a disorder is because there's a potential for harm. Which, yeah, how can you be harmed from a daydream, right? But with maladaptive daydreaming, so there's one component when you're, like, doing something in the daydream and you're just sitting down. But there's this other part of it where you actually will have, I call them sessions, where I literally just devote all of my time and energy to my daydream. Where, and this is something I still partake in, I'm not like super duper enmeshed in my fantasy worlds 90% of my day anymore. I can find myself slipping into being that way certain times of the day, like if I'm driving or something. And I mean, I'm not sure if this is me controlling it or if that's how actual people daydreaming because I don't know what normal daydreaming is like anymore. So I'll find myself doing that, but then I'll actually like, if I'm bored or something and I don't want to do something maybe or if I've heard new music that I really like which is a thing that I've also read that people like to listen to music during their sessions but like during these okay <laughs> during these sessions people will do something that is like a repetitive motion like walking around or running or pacing back and forth and my particular repetitive motion that I find myself doing that I have done ever since I was a child was or is sorry my little kitten what are you doing what are you doing you want to say hello to youtube hello so um my repetitive motion of choice was spinning around in circles and i still do that which which is why it's so embarrassing because it's like what <laughs> What are you even talking about? You just spin around in circles listening to music while you're in this whole different alternate world? Yeah, that's that's what I do. And that's why I've been like super embarrassed to talk about it. Which, now that I say that out loud, I feel because I know how intricate these worlds are and how intricate these like feelings and emotions within these alternate worlds can be that like nobody understands it. It's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> all right then but yeah so spinning around in circles is my thing and I have actually given myself bruises from spinning around in circles like sometimes like okay for example so when I was like 
when was this? I think I was like 17 years old and I was having a daydreaming session and I was listening to music, spinning around <laughs> and I wanted to like change the song mid spin. Oh my gosh, this is so silly. And I actually ended up chipping my tooth and I told my mom that was just because my phone dropped on my face because my phone literally chipped it, but um, it wasn't because I was like just laying down with it, but it was actually me spinning around and I hit it when I was doing it. And that's just so awkward and embarrassing. And I didn't want to tell her about this because she's actually caught me in mid <laughs> session before where she's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, the first time she thought it, she saw me do this, she thought I was, like, trying to get a high off of it or something, and I was like, no. But explaining it is a lot, it's just, it's hard to explain, obviously. So, that's really kind of why I've internalized it, because I didn't want my parents thinking I was trying to, like, get high off of spinning around in circles, but, like, telling them that, oh, I'm just daydreaming, seems like... A different thing entirely unless they're watching this now but I mean I guess you know what was wrong with me but it is an actual condition that other people have so don't worry I think don't worry I'm kind of talking about this lighthearted but it can actually be a downer a lot of the time and I feel like I could have had so much done within my life if I didn't have this condition could have had more friends. I could have maybe learned how to manage my time better instead of becoming a horrible procrastinator that I still struggle with today. I could feel confident enough to be able to talk about this before if it hadn't been such a thing that I've internalized. So yeah, it's mostly also the reason I'm talking about this now is because I realized maybe it's something I need to control more. So that doesn't become quite a problem anymore in my life. And I also think that it is a condition that needs a lot more research because this is something that I think other people, or that I know other people are struggling with. And um, it took me a long time to figure out this was what it was. And it was such a relief. So I think the more that other people are able to talk about it, the more exposure it may get. The more individuals who actually do have this condition will find out that this is what it is. It's something other people have. You're not just a weirdo because that's what that's what I thought I was. And yeah, I hope if someone is dealing with this, that this video is able to kind of reassure you you're not alone with that. And if you've never heard of this before, maybe you can be inspired to find more research or maybe it's just an interesting thing for you to learn about. It is something I want to work on because I think it could, it has distracted me a lot from actually being more successful, if that makes sense. I don't know, but it is something that I've been struggling with for 20 years. And I think if I'm able to tackle this big part of me, that maybe it'll help me be a little more successful within my life. If that makes sense. I don't know. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to be notified when I make videos because when I upload them, it's kind of sporadic. It's usually just if I get a hit of inspiration or something. Um, but yeah, I mostly talk about my weight loss journey. So the related videos, I don't know which side will appear on, but they're probably related to my weight loss journey. And... I'll probably be posting a lot more videos about mental health because I'm feeling more comfortable with discussing that on this channel. So yeah, we'll see. All right. Okay. Enough rambling. All right. Have a great day. Bye.